In this lesson, we're going to be looking at CSS Combinator Selectors. So what exactly are they? Let's dive in. First of all, then let's put some elements onto our page. So let's just go for a paragraph element and say, I am a paragraph. And down here, let's just do a button element. And let's just say, click me. Okay, so on our screen then we have a paragraph element that says I'm a paragraph and a button that says click me. Let's now head on over to our style.css file. And on here I've just got an all selector here that selects everything and gives it a font family of Arial and a H2 which relates to uh, this title here that says text line center. I'm just going to collapse these for now just so we don't get distracted by them. And down here then let's start by looking at the combinator selectors. So what exactly are combinator selectors? Combinator selectors enable us to select elements in different ways. So for example, grouping elements together, selecting elements that come immediately before or after, and even selecting elements that are placed inside other elements. Let's take a look at these in detail. So first then, how do we select multiple elements? You might think you can just say in a paragraph, let's also select the button, and let's give them both a color of red. Okay. Hmm. That didn't work. As you can see, that uh, hasn't applied the color of red. That's because that's not how we do this. To select multiple elements, we simply separate them by a comma. So if we come in here, do a comma. And now you can see both our paragraph element and the button element both have a color of red. Incidentally, we can also add this H2 here as well. And we can just say comma H2. And this will give the H2 as well a color of red. So to select multiple elements and give them the same styling, we can separate them by, these, by this uh, comma here. Let's go to this. So here then, let's just add a comment. And let's just say, say selects multiple, no, select multiple elements by separating them with a comma. Okay. So now let's take a look at how to select elements that are placed inside other elements. So as you know, HTML is a nested language, meaning we can place elements inside elements. But how do we actually select certain elements in this way? First of all, let's go to our HTML file and add some more elements on there. So uh, let's just quickly save this as well. Okay, and then here, I'm just going to put a break tag in here. Take caps lock off. Okay, so here then, let's say, um, let's go for a div. Let's give this an ID of outer div, and you'll see why I'll call that in just a second. Inside here, let's go for another div and give this an ID of inner div. Okay, so you can see that the div with an ID of inner div is placed inside this div that has an ID of outer div. And then inside this, inside our inner div tag here, let's just say paragraph, do four paragraph elements. And let's just say I am a p tag inside a div tag. Okay, and let's just copy this through for these other elements here. Okay, so what we have here then is we have a div tag with an ID of outer div. Inside that div tag, we have another div tag with an ID of inner div. And then inside that div tag, we have four paragraph elements. Let's head on over to our CSS file and see how we can actually style these. Now, I just want to quickly comment this out here because it's being applied to all our paragraph elements here as well. So for now, let's just comment this out. Okay. And down here then, let's first see how we can select elements that are simply inside another element. So we're just looking at selecting elements that are descendants of another element. So here, let's say ID of outer div. And let's say we want to select all the paragraph elements inside outer div. We can just do space and then P for paragraph element. Okay. So what this will do then is this will select all the paragraph elements that are inside the element that has an ID of outer div. Now, if we go back to our index.html file, we can see that these paragraph elements here are inside this div with an ID of outer div, although they are not placed directly inside because inside our outer div here, we also have this inner div tag as well. But still, these paragraph elements here are still placed inside this outer div. If you look at it as a sort of parent-child relationship here, these paragraph elements will be the child, this inner div tag here will be the parent, and then this outer div tag here will be the uh, grandparent. 
okay? So the way that we select elements that are placed inside other elements, no matter how many levels deep, we use this syntax here. We do the name of the outer element or containing element, and then the name of what we want to select inside that element, no matter how many levels deep. So here then, let's just say color blue. And as you can see, all our paragraph elements here have been given the color of blue. So then how do we select an element that is placed directly inside another element? Let's take a look at that next. First of all, let's just put our uh, comment on this as well. So here, let's just say, let's say selects all inside of descendant. Okay, and now down here, let's see how we can select an element that is placed directly inside another element. So here then what we're trying to do is we only want to style these paragraph element tags if they are placed directly inside our div tag of id in a div. In other words, we're looking at how to style elements by direct descendants, okay? So here we can say, this time in a div, of course this is all case sensitive so make sure you type it out correctly, in a div and here then, the way that we select elements that are placed directly inside of an element or a direct descendant is by doing this more than sign or forward arrow key here. Then space and then the name of the element. So in this case, our element is the P tag. And then again, curly braces, and then we can put our styles in here. So let's change the color then of this to, let's say green. And now, as you can see, all our paragraph elements here have been given the color of green. So then here, let's add our comment. And here, let's just say, selects inside parent. And in brackets here, I'm just gonna say, uh, direct descendant. Okay, so that's how to select elements that are placed inside of other elements, and how to select elements that are placed directly inside other elements. Now let's take a look at how to select elements that are placed immediately after and immediately before other elements. So let's go back to our HTML file, and let's put some more elements in here. Uh, let's do another break tag here, and down here, let's just say h3, uh, I'm just going to say h3 tag, and then directly after this, let's say paragraph tag, I'll just say p tag, again let's throw in a break tag here, let's go down line, um, and now let's do a h4, so it's h4 tag, and again a paragraph tag that says p tag, put a break in. Okay, so basically what we have here is we have a h3 element, and directly after that then we have a paragraph element, then we have a h4 element, and directly after that we have a paragraph element. Okay, so let's see how we can actually style these in different ways. So let's go to our CSS file. We actually want to style all the paragraph elements that are placed immediately after h3. So actually, let me just go back into our HTML file and just copy this through again, just show that we can select all. Okay, so now we have just the same thing there. So h3, paragraph tag, h4, paragraph tag, and then just, just repeat it there again. And here then, let's select all paragraph elements that are placed immediately after h3 tags. So here then we have one here, this is directly after h3 tag, and then we also have one here. This is also placed directly after a h3 tag. So how do you select that? Over here, we'll say h3, space, and then plus, and then the name of our element. In this case, it's p. So what we're saying here is, we want to select all p elements that are placed immediately after the h3 element. So no, whenever we have an instance on our page where we have a paragraph element that comes immediately after a h3 element, then give it the following styling. Let's just say color blue and text decoration underline. So now we can see in our browser window here, the two paragraph elements that are placed immediately after h3 elements have been given a color of blue and an underline as well. The other paragraphs have been left untouched because we haven't selected them. So this is how to select an element that is placed immediately after another one. So let's add our comment here. Okay, and we can say selects all elements, which is why I decided to sort of duplicate this just so you can see that it does select all elements. This one is also selected. Selects all elements placed 
immediately after an element. Okay, so let's see then how we can select elements that are placed immediately before. So down here, now let's select the uh, paragraph elements h4 tags here that are placed immediately before paragraph elements. So in our HTML again, just to quickly show you. We want to select all h4 elements or h4 tags that are placed immediately before paragraph elements. So here we have this one here and we have this one here. It's placed immediately before a paragraph element. So in here, let's say paragraph space and then this tilde symbol and then h4. So what we're saying here is we're saying select all h4 elements that are placed immediately before all paragraph elements. Okay, so whenever we have an instance in our code where we have a h4 tag that is placed immediately before a paragraph tag, then give it the following styling. Let's say let's just change the color here to orange red. And as you can see, both our h4 tags here have been given the style of color orange red. So again, let's put our comment in here and we'll say what this does is this selects all elements elements placed immediately before an element. Now just a quick note here, the syntax here can be a little bit confusing, so let me just break that down so you fully understand it. It would have been easier, I guess, for this to read left to right, but when it comes to selecting elements that are placed immediately before or after, they're actually read from right to left, so you would think that this could be, you know, select all h3 elements that come after paragraph elements, but actually it's the other way around, it's select all paragraph elements that appear immediately after h3 elements. And the same thing with this one here, it's select all h4 elements that appear immediately before paragraph elements and not the other way around. So that's just a quick little tip on remembering which way around to write them. It is slightly confusing, it would have been just been easier if it was written the other way around, um, but unfortunately that's, that's just the way it is. But yeah, that should help you to understand that a bit more. Okay, so that wraps up this lesson then. So we've looked at the CSS combinator selectors. Let's go over what we've learned. We looked at first how to select multiple elements and give them the same styling. So we did that by doing this uh, separator here, which was a comma. So we did paragraph, comma, button, and we gave it color of red. We then looked at how to select elements that were descendants of other elements or placed inside other elements. So here we had our outer div, space, and then we had our paragraph element. Notice here, there is no other symbol or anything in between here, it's just a space. We then looked at how to select elements that were directly inside an element. So in other words, a parent or direct descendant. And we did that by doing the parent element and then this more than sign and then the child element and we did that by styling all our paragraph elements here and giving them a color of green and then finally we looked at how to select elements that were placed immediately after and immediately before to select an element that is placed immediately after another element we do the element that we're identifying and then what element comes after it in this case the p tag so we separate that by a plus symbol here and then for elements that come immediately before an element we do the exact same thing, but instead we change the plus symbol here for this tilde symbol. Okay guys, so again, I know that was quite a lot to take in, but do go over it again if you need to and um, get, go ahead and practice these things. It really does make all the world of difference when you actually get yourself a text editor and learn and practice these things for yourself. So do go ahead and do that and follow along with these lessons. In our next lesson, we're gonna be looking at CSS pseudo classes. No idea what those are? Don't worry, we'll explain them all in the next lesson.